Good afternoon, everyone. Today will be our final lecture, seminar uh, of summer training mobile AI class. As you may know, today is the third week. Already first week we covered classification, second week we covered segmentation, and today will be the last one of the basic computer vision task detection part. couple of things before we start practicum 2 it's already online so please make sure you have schemes read and I'll have time until next Tuesday to help you if you have any questions about it and practicum 3 the last one is also on the way maybe next by next Tuesday Thursday it will be uploaded online as well so uh, last time as you remember, like we briefly mentioned what kind of tasks are of our interest. Mm. The first one shows the classification, second one semantic segmentation, and today we'll move on on more interesting task, which is object detection. And also last time we have shown that segmentation is quite has wide applications in biomedical imaging field. Uh, most of them uh, include like dermatology, microscopy, histopathology, and probably with some of them you are already acquainted during your research works. And we have revisited also the classical segmentation models, and we have shown that they all share common backbones, and for the decoding part we can modify a little bit and we can end up with a little bit different architecture which will fit a bit better for one case or a little bit worse for another case. These are the four more, more common ones that you often meet in papers for biomedical imaging. We also covered uh, some little map of segmentation losses which are quite common you don't need to know all of them but at least you have to be able to categorize into its whether it's re region related or boundary related and like so more common of them like cross entropy or dice loss you have to know for sure what is it and how it can be used for your own tasks so and also when we uh, design our segmentation models <coughs> we have shown that you can divide it into separate parts. First part is base network or backbone as you may call it. Second one is the main architecture part and depending on, on your taste and accuracy you can play with it to, to find best for your own case. And today uh, we will stop by detection task. We will explain brief models that are quite common and baselines and a little bit related to the detection task in general. So let's start with from the problem definition of it. Let's say we have a MRI section, for example, uh, as an input image. It's originally 3D, like 3D image is basically consists of slices of 2D image, but let's think that we have this kind of section of 2D image in the beginning. And our task, for example, is to get an output like this. And if you zoom up later at your home, you can see that from this kind of image, we can get different part of organs and classify them, not only classify, but also localize each organ where it's positioned. Uh, different organs could be separated from basic training, like kidney, uh, kidney, abdomen, pancreas, and etc. So, how to make it work is actually so. What kind of things we are interested in is uh, coordinates of the center of each object, and if we know the center, we are also interested in the height and width of that object and these four parameters basically define the bounding box around the object and also we are interested in what kind of class it belongs to uh, in our case it 
it's kind of like which organ it belongs to and also we want to know at which confidence or at which probability we can say for sure that this is kidney for example uh, also you can decode this part into a, a little bit different set of parameters instead of giving center of the object it can be shown as like top left and like bottom right and from knowing these two positions you can also define the bounding box so how do we actually make it train or learn to the model so as you may know or may not know basic deep learning is can be classified into the classification task or the regression task so if we make it as a regression task then it means that we put some model for example any CNN let's say and our objective is to find four coordinates or four points and points are usually denoted from the regression so let's say like we end up with x y and w and h which define our boundary box and make it as a regression task it's possible this can be done and let's think so <clears throat> in the second below image you can see that um, there is fv and od we are interested in two parts actually so in the second case we have two objects but in the first image we had one um, object right so depending on each image the number of objects could be different so it's a little bit tricky to to make it as a regression tasks because from image in to image we end up with different number of objects per image so it's not quite convenient to to our model so and for your information actually if you don't know some of it like I put the parts of um, how you can kind of diagnose most common um, diseases like glaucoma or diabetic retinopathy for example by knowing some parts of your eye in detail and this is if we make it as a regression path so so in the first case we have to get four numbers but in the second case we are interested in eight numbers right so but usually our model needs to output only like fixed number of parameters at the end so the second uh, approach is put in detection as a classification task so basically we for example take a patch or crop part from the whole image let's say and then we apply some CNN classifier to this like green or uh, blue box let's say and for each of these window we want to make a classifier oh is it fovea or is it optical disk no 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 is it background yes so if we go like window by window switch windows and we end up for example at one of the windows it will show optical disk yes yes it belongs to this class and it doesn't belong to the background so we can make kind of classification local classifications at each window this is the very first approach that researchers in computer vision have uh, started with and the mature, mature uh, model of it was uh, faster RCNN it's called so um, this is kind of a little bit expensive for us right to go at each bounding box and finding the mm, finding each classifier it's very computationally expensive so um, yeah instead we would come up with some this part of the network it's called region proposal network and this kind of small network will automatically suggest us the best uh, regions of interest that could say oh there is an object that we're interested in or not so there are two parts actually one part is region proposal network and second part is the the output that we want to get regression and classification at the head <coughs> and uh, our model in the faster RCNN for example um, it's interested to optimize in four parameters four losses uh, region proposal network mm, coordinates and classifier and also final classification bounding box and final classification loss
you are interested in details, please refer to the original paper, so there will be more details on it. And actually faster RCNN is a two-stage detector and there are kind of two type of basic how we can categorize detection models like two stage and one stage. Two stage are more complicated in terms that of it consists of two steps. We said it needs region proposal network and it needs the basic detection head. So but one stage is more efficient. It only consists of from one pass or like from only um, one uh, detection generator we can build our full model. So usually two stage was uh, reported to be more accurate, but it's more slower actually. It's slower compared to one stage. Since it is a mobile AI class, we are interested in efficient networks that will perform real time applications, right? So today we'll mostly focus on one stage. And if we briefly like plot the, what kind of models has been proposed from 2014 to 2019, this is only like small piece of it, which is commonly known, but I ass can assure that there is much more which has been published after that time. So the ones which are focused to like with the red are more common ones and like basic models which are kind of classical in these terms. So, <coughs> and object detection models, every of it, from the engineering point, it can be, um, it can be considered or as, a as a human skeleton actually. Let's say like human skeleton has three main parts in his back and it's a backbone, it's a neck and it's a head, right? So similarly, an uh, object detection model, when you engineer it, you can separate it in, into three parts, like backbone, neck, and head. And depending on your, depending on your task, and depending on your complexity on data itself, you can uh, modify each piece separately, module by module. And for example, let's say you want to use ResNet, or you, you want to use BVG. In this case, like you modify only backbone part, but you can also, for example, make modify modification in the neck part. Let's say you want feature pyramids or you want like some mm, uh, neck or without neck, for example, let's say. And then at the head part, at the very last blue part, um, you can separate detection by two categories, one stage detector or two stage detector. So whether you need the region proposal or not. So depending on it, it you can distinguish the detection models. And when you like evaluate any of your detection models, the common metrics is mean average precision. So from statistics and from basic um, class of math, we could know that there are two metrics like precision and recall. These two metrics are basically show how good um, your model or something is um, can get the classification and its distribution. So basically we are interested in the values of true positive or true negative or false positive and the ratio. So like these are definitions for precision and recall. Yeah. It can be confusing, but with more practice, you can, um, I think, find out more about it. And <coughs> once we have like precision and recall, we can draw a graph, like y-axis show the precision and like x-axis show your recall, and you can plot your precision and recall depending on your intersection of union. And like if you have intersection of union 0 0.5 or 0 0.75 on depending on this intersection of union parameter like precision recall curve it be a little bit different and intersection of union I think we covered a little bit last time so yeah and this kind of mean average precision could should be taken for each class actually and 
mean average is basically like when you take the average from each class by class by class, you end up uh, having your this parameter. So let's dive into the one stage detectors and the very first of it was YOLO. The full name is like you only look once, which means like forward pass and like with, without region proposals and it will generate you directly the bounding boxes and their classes. So this is the basic architecture of it. Um, the middle part shows the dark net. Mm, you may know, not heard of it, but there is actually nothing very much complex about it. It's very similar to the VGG like uh, CNNs at the heart. Mm, so the idea was to propose unified architecture to do two tasks. Um, we mean like detection and classification and also it's fit for real-time applications since you eliminate the region proposal. So workflow is basically like this. Any picture, any any kind of image, you can split it into like S by S cells. S by S in the YOLO is originally seven by seven. So like you can split image into seven by seven cells and consider each cell separately. And for each of the cell, uh, the model should give you like um, whether there is an object, if there is an object, at which confidence are you sure about this object, and also if there is still any object, then give me the points or bounding box around it. And the, this is kind of how the training is done. So there is like very a little bit seems complicated mass but the general idea that you should get about it is there are two kind of losses the first one is localization loss and second one is classification loss and basically by optimizing these two losses we finally get the model which performs well on these two um, parameters and of course this kind of force, it's not fixed. You can customize a little bit, give different weights and stuff. So, and it, it's tunable. Don't worry if it's not exactly the same. And the performance about it is reported to be um, like 66 of mean average precision. It means like if some um, model is more than 50, it means like mm, quite well. But especially if it's real time application, it's like more good like so 66 at, at this at this rate and at this frame rate inference it's um, um, quite good actually so another representative model from one stage detectors is single shot multi-box detector the short name is like SSD and um, the backbone could be similar but the difference here is that you can see the error shows the uh, feature maps right and from the each feature map we want to get the representation and use this representation to um, to regress our bounding box so this is the basic difference from the yolo and another difference is that um, here for example YOLO initially didn't know anything about bouncing boxes, right? It had to infer like uh, during the training. But in SSD, we are given set of default boxes and from default boxes, we just should choose which one is better and which one is worse. And if we find something is better, then we just have to optimize this bounding box to fit more into our object. And Another kind of key about this model is that it can be used with some pre-trained backbones. <coughs> so the workflow is like we have offset, uh, we have some anchor boxes. Anchor box is the same as meaning as default boxes. So like picture on the right shows that we have different aspect ratios and for example uh, like six or nine default boxes are uh, like searching through these nine default boxes and see which performs better or worse. And like 
when we go deeper, let's say like layer by layer by layer, you see that like uh, the picture is becoming smaller, resolution like the image size is becoming smaller, but the feature is becoming more dense. So and the bouncing box doesn't change its size, right? If we go and see the green part of it, we see that the image is becoming smaller, but the bouncing box stays the same. So, and model thinks that, oh, bouncing box is becoming bigger. So, um, it's quite good for us and for the model to know about the scale, because some objects, for example, if you see the cat, cat occupies less region compared to the dog. So, dog needs bigger bouncing box and cats needs a smaller bouncing box and SSD model uh, is quite well to tackle this task at different scales. For the training part, um, similarly it has two, two pieces, one is a localization piece and um, for the localization loss they choose um, smooth L1 loss and these are kind of definitions for it and second one is confidence loss. Confidence is similar to the classification loss actually. <coughs> and softmax is uh, chosen to define the, the which one is good for for each object. And this is kind of qualitative results on the left and the, it shows 70% of mean average precision. So from the table you can see that YOLO is about 66 and SSD is about 77. We can say it's better but we should know we should take keep in mind that it's only better for the specific data set. If we have our own data set by medical imaging uh, data set for example then we have to try both because it's not like one-to-one -one transfer from the real world data sets to the biomedical data. <coughs> and the third one um, is which we'll cover today from one stage detectors is retina net uh, model architecture is something like this and from the last time you may remember it's something similar to the mm, feature pyramid like segmentation tasks so basically um, this is the representation of feature pyramid and at each level of the pyramid we want to get um, representations and use these representations to build our bouncing box. So why it's kind of powerful is because um, like there is like bottom up and there is like top down two paths and from like having information flow from top down and bottom up, uh, we can use richer information and we can uh, deduce like more dense or like more sparse uh, representations about the object and the features. And yes, basically high level semantic feature maps at all scales with feature pyramid networks and also another novelty from this paper is that there is like focal loss. Um, we will talk about it later in detail, but briefly it's like to prevent class imbalances. Um, workflow is that like the left part of it is can be used as a simple backbone like ResNet like architectures and also here we use predefined anchor boxes or default boxes in the paper they report as nine. And model outputs, uh, class probabilities and anchor boxes. So at the end, as you may see, like we have bounding box which and its class and we also apply focal loss. It's kind of new compared to, to the previous. Mm. So for the training, as we mentioned, mm, localization loss, for the localization loss they use like smooth L1 and this is kind of definition. Uh, we could talk about it more after the class if you're interested in like how it works and why exactly this function. So, but it's like this smooth L1 loss, it's not 
proposed in this paper actually it was proposed in the original original fast fast rcnn like architectures so they just like coming from historically they use the same laws and for the classification laws uh, they use um, focal loss as we mentioned and from the chart uh, in the right so the job and the role of this focal loss is to help our class imbalance as we mentioned so why it's important or why it's helpful for our case let's say <coughs> let's say for example we have like dog and cat right and for example one default box shows us oh yeah there is an object there is a class but many others show oh there is no object just background 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 so you have only for example one box which is our class and 10 or 100 of boxes which are un not necessary at all so it's kind of creates our imbalance between the box of interest and the box which is not interesting right and to optimize well on it um, the paper proposes like focal loss which adds a separate parameter to tune these class imbalances so it pays more attention to the task which is more harder like and less attention to the things which is not which is not of interest so by having this there is one more parameter actually here alpha and by like changing this alpha it can give more or less weight depending on class imbalance so and the performance as we have a used to to see so mm, here it shows like 61 percent at 50 so on on data set i, I think it's coco probably so on coco data set it performs a little bit higher than previously reported like ssd and yolo like architectures at one stage and it's for the table and for the left part of it you can see that um like the inference time is quite high or i mean quite low so it's uh, it, it's also like real-time applications but at the same time it gives us higher accuracy so i recommend to try a retina like retina net like architecture for detection on your smartphones or on your raspberry pis maybe with accelerators in the future so if you are interested in object detection at high accuracy so we have been showing like this kind of metrics and stuff right but mm, the basic data set let's go to the evaluation and metrics again so data set which is commonly standardized for benchmarking different models is pascal voc in which was reported in 2012 but originally it comes from 2007 so mm, basically on this data set you can evaluate your like models which is related to classification segmentation and um, a little bit different tasks as well so it represents 20 classes and there are like more than 10,000 images for for all over the classes second one which is also common is coco dataset mm. it stands for microsoft common objects in context there are 80 classes and more than 100,000 images for all the classes so yeah the this is the basic part about detections and um, how you could start learning about it and if you want to expand more and further on it um, so like the hot research in computer vision is like how about representing objects not with bounding boxes um, but with key points and there are several strategies how it can be done as it can be the center of the object or as it can be just two points like left corner top bottom and the related papers is to refer is center net and corner net and there is also a kind of trend in anchor free yolo x is just was released this summer so it's another way to deep dive into it and the last one is not last one but also one of the perspective um, 
trends is like to use transforming like models for the detection part as well. Conclusion. So when you design your detection model, also you can use base network as also backbone and you can take any of the models like your SSD, corner net, center net and just play with any of them and takeaways is that two stage uh, report to be more accurate especially with like cascade RCNN like architectures um, they're quite heavy but they're quite powerful and retina net if you don't know where to start from so retina net performs competitive in at high frame rates so you can start with it detection is still ongoing research and there are many things are being reported every week actually not only months but so mm, it's quite quickly changing mm, direction so thank you for your attention if you have any questions around today's lecture so please feel free to ask questions you can ask questions not only about today's but about previous or about any concerns you can raise now as well okay no questions then let's end this section today.